Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the walk. A uh, happy Friday to all of you. I don't know about the rest of you, but this week has seemed to go very slow. It's been a very long week, and I'm very glad that we are finally at the weekend. So as I said yesterday, I kind of suspected that the Holy Spirit would be leading us towards a, a book study of Second Peter, and that's not what happened. This morning, I got a clear message as I was praying that we were to talk about the fact that God listens to us. And sometimes God kind of leads me down a rabbit trail because he knows the rabbit trail is going to eventually get me to where he wants me to be. And as I started looking at the different scriptures and open Bible that came up when I put God hears us, um, one of the ones that came up was 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. So I always like to read around it and get the context. And as I read around it and tried to get the context, I got a lot more information than just that God hears us. So the message is a lot more than just that. So let's dive right in. And I am before, I always, it seems like on Fridays, I tend to forget to remind you. Saturdays, I do not do a video. That is my day of rest. That's my day off. Um, God commanded us to have a day of rest, and I take that day to be obedient to that command and kind of rejuvenate myself so that I'm ready for Sunday through Friday. So there will not be a video tomorrow. I will be back again Sunday morning at 1030. So this is what it says in 1 John chapter 2, and we're starting in verse 9. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his son. When I read that, I had to stop and pause and really think about that. How much more am I willing to accept what a human being tells me they saw, they heard, they experienced, than I am to accept what God is telling me? And I always second guess, did I hear that correctly? Because the, the, the voice of the Holy Spirit is often so still and so quiet that it's easy for me to confuse it with my own thoughts. And then I started to think even more about it and I said to myself, well, we're told to tell others what God has done in our lives. That's our testimony. How powerful is that when you combine the two? You're combining your experiences with what God has done in your life and you're using it to tell others the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's a beautiful combination. There's power when you combine those two. And I know that this verse isn't about combining the two. This verse is more about the contrast between the two. We should be more willing to accept the testimony of God. But it just seems like it gives it so much more oomph for that non-believer when we're combining the two. What God has told us about himself and what we can tell others about what God has done in our lives. That's a powerful message. And we shouldn't take that for granted, and we shouldn't um, see that as ineffective, because it's not. Verse 10, whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar, because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. So the bottom line is you either believe or you don't believe. And if you are a believer, then you've entered into that relationship with Jesus Christ. And you're a part of that great commission in Matthew 28. So we all need to be aware of the fact that people who don't believe yet kind of see all of this as fantasy. And that's kind of where they are. I'm not saying you have to meet them on that playing field, but you have to be aware that that's what their mindset is. And that's why it's so powerful to give your own personal testimony of what God has done in your life. They know you as a person. They have a relationship with you. They don't have a relationship with God at that point. Verse 11, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. That is the message of the gospel in a nutshell. We get eternal life through God's son. Boom, right there. Verse 12, whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have eternal life. Now we all know because of 
previous messages, and I, if you've um, been a believer for a long time, you've read your Bible, we know that when Christ comes back, that's the cutoff. If you've not entered into that relationship with Jesus Christ, you're too late. You're also too late if you pass away and life is fleeting. So we need to be in anguish for those people that are around us and have not entered into that relationship with Jesus Christ yet. We need to be really heartbroken for the fact that they're not in that relationship and do everything we can to let them know about the eternal life that's available to them if they enter into that relationship. Verse 13, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. So John is writing these things to give us assurance that yes, if you've entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ, you put your faith and trust in him, you have eternal life. You didn't earn it, you just believed. Verse 14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, excuse me, he hears us. Because we are a child of God, he's our daddy. We can have confidence when we approach him in that prayer closet. Confidence that he's listening to us. Confidence that he cares about what's going on in our lives. He cares about the most minute little things. And he can't wait to hear from you. He loves you so much that he is anticipating and waiting for that time where you're going to get on your knees and you're going to pray and you're going to talk to your daddy. But we also need to remember, he's not that genie in the bottle. We have to remember our place within the relationship. He is the God of, he is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He's the God of the universe. He created the universe. We are his children. We are here to serve him. Remember your place within that relationship. Don't think that he's here to serve you. It's backwards. That's backwards. You are here to serve him and fulfill that great commission. Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. So people may say, you oh, you know, I prayed for that new car and I don't have the money to, for that new car. Why didn't God hear me? Well, it's not that God didn't hear you. It has to be within God's will. And we have to remember that God is omnipotent and he knows everything. He knows what's best for you in a way that you could never possibly understand. And it's possible that that new car is not what's best for you. It's possible that you may need to learn about saving money, or maybe you need to learn about um, um, driving something that doesn't make you feel like you have so much status so that you can learn more humility. Who knows what kind of lesson it is that God wants you to learn out of that. It's not that he didn't hear your prayer. It's not that he didn't answer your prayer. It's that he knew it wasn't what was best for you. He knew that it also wasn't going to fulfill his plan of redemption. So he didn't give it to you. And that's, we need to be okay with that. We need to have so much faith and trust in who God is that we're okay with him giving us what is within his will because we understand that he knows so much more than we do. He loves us so much more than we could ever love ourselves. He loves us way more than we could ever love him. So as you go in your prayer closets today, Remember that he, you can approach his throne with that confidence of knowing that he hears you and he cares about everything you have to say. He loves you so much. Go enjoy that time with God and enjoy your day of rest as you have your, I, I would imagine most of us have our days of rest over the weekend. Enjoy that day of rest, get rejuvenated, and I will see you all again on Sunday at 1030. God bless and keep walking the walk.